What up, man? Welcome back to the channel, dude. Today we have a whole bench, I want to say, full of crap, dude. All right, it's not really crap, dude, but we did stop by the P.O. box, and there's quite a few things in there sent from you guys, so we are going to get into this here in a little bit. This one we've actually had here at the house for a little while. Braven's already opened it up to go through it. Um, this is this is dope, dude, so uh, hell yeah. But moving on over here, this is a few things that Josh actually dropped off for the hatch. Uh, this is going to be that sensor that hopefully is going to get the temperature gauge working. Um, this is a new distributor and then new knuckles, dude. But the only problem is the knuckles don't have ball joints. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get to installing these today. I'm waiting for him to drop off ball joints. But I figured that we could at least throw this distributor in and we can throw on uh, the sensor and see if that possibly fixes a couple of our damn problems, dude. That really shouldn't take us too terribly long. And then, whenever we get those on, uh, hopefully I'm not like super depressed because this stuff didn't work. Then we'll come back and we'll open these up. Oh, very nice, man. Look how pretty it is. A job braving in the eye. Oh. <laughs> but the cream of the crop, my friend. Cream of the crop. Which way does this open? Jesus Lord. <gasps> oh my Lord. Would you just look at that? Wow. That's fancy. It's a new distributor and the new temperature sending unit is now installed. So hopefully, hopefully my friend, man. Hopefully my friend, man. But we still need to put the drain plug on the gas tank and put some damn gas inside of this thing, man. You know, that's what I forgot. Let's go get some more fuel. Do we still have some in that blue can? Uh, oh, shit. Why is there two blue cans here now? Okay, the, mine's the one with the black lid, right? Yeah. I don't want to put methanol inside of this car. Yeah, no, this, this <laughs> is the one with the black. No, no putting M5 in there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ugh, there's a very small amount. Jeez. We're definitely going to have to go get some more fuel. Alright. I'm going to put this plug in the gas tank. Can you get a funnel? Woo! There's a pressure in there. Why's it gotta be so damn windy? Jesus, man. All right, so that should be a lot better than the green get green gas that was in there. But yeah, bro, that gas was green, straight up green. Um, I think we're ready, bro. Think so? Yeah, I think so. Let's give let's give it a shot. I'm gonna set the tripod up. Wish us luck. I'm gonna be so upset right now. I'm gonna be so upset if this is not what freaking does it. This car is testing my gangster, bro. This car is. Testing my gangster. Dry. 
Well, you see, I think that we put enough gas in there, but I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe we didn't. Maybe it's not enough. I did completely 100% drain this thing, like 100% dry, and I left the drain plug and the gas cap off all night long so that any like fuel in there will complete. That, that's why I had the car jacked up also. It was like leaning so that all the fuel would roll to the side of the tank that actually has the drain. Um, and I, I left it open all night, so anything left would just evaporate out, you know what I'm saying? So, it was completely dry, and I think we just put... I mean, that had to have been at least a gallon, bro. You don't... Well, fuck. I would imagine for as, as big as that tank is, like a gallon. Yeah, the gallon probably... There's probably like that much gas in the bottom of that tank. So, maybe you're right, bro. We're gonna run to the damn store, go get gas. Jesus Christ. By the way, you got a dash too. So, yeah. All right, so that's about six fucking gallons in there now. So, that should be enough fuel for this motherfucker to pick it up and hopefully start. So, here goes try number two. All right, well now the only thing that we've done is we swapped out the damn distributor, so. And now it doesn't want to start, and it doesn't have spark. I mean, they're the exact same fucking distributor, so. All right, so it is now the next day, and we had a very long night of troubleshooting, and frustration trying to figure this damn car out, man. But Curly came over and he was giving me a hand with it, of course. And what we did is he pulled the ECU out. I had an extra ECU sitting up here on the shelf that was also chipped. Um, there for a moment, the car would run with no chip in it for whatever reason. Like he didn't change what is on the chip. He just plugged his, his ECU into it and tried messing with it. But it seemed like every time that he would get it to, to start, then it would just quit. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like he had to keep throwing fuel at it to get it to start and then it would just stop. And let me show you what I think. I mean, and I'm just guessing there. I don't know if that's what he was doing, was throwing fuel at it, but that's that's what I was under the assumption that that's probably what he was doing. I don't know computer tuner things, bro. Neutral. <clears throat> Open the throttle, spray some in. All right, stand back some in case it backfires. All right, spray. Whenever it, it does that, whenever it starts, then just start spraying some in. I will, I'll throttle it from here. Just don't have your face close to the throttle body in case it backfires. Can I blow up again? <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's throw some in there. Raven spraying the brake cleaner in there. All right, you can stop. <sighs> It'll only run while you're spraying brake cleaner in there. Yeah. <laughs> what? Don't look at me like that. Yeah. If you get in there and you listen to the fuel pump as you cycle the key, you can hear it. It's like a me, but it's really, really quiet. Like, what I think it is, so I think that fuel pump is like weak, bro. I, I think it's just not giving it enough fuel pressure to actually run. 
Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, I did end up figuring out. Well, I didn't end up figuring out, but we ended up figuring out that code nine uh, that it was throwing. It ended up being there's two wires on here that had to be switched around. Um, you can do it down at the ECU. Um, it's wiring that was already existing on the car, but the cylinder one position sensor or cylinder position sensor wire and there was another one that you had to switch around um and i actually found that out from mark over at honda street garage yeah mark gave me a call he's like hey bro i just watched the video and i i'm pretty sure that this is the problem that you're having um because i had the same problem before um and then uh i explained to curly what it was that mark told me and then curly went through it and got them switched around and then it stopped doing that so the code 9 wasn't an issue anymore but then all these other issues started popping up so now we're just going to go ahead and pull the injector clips and put a test light on it and see if they're at least getting voltage whenever we're cranking it all right we're gonna start over from square one bro we need to check this thing for spark and fuel pressure starting off i unplugged the signal wire for the starter this is the wire that whenever you turn your key it actually tells it to crank and start the car and we made this really quick it's just got a female connector on it and it's just a wire where the end of it is stripped and so that way i don't have to keep going in and out of the car to test fire to see if it's gonna yeah, this plastic sleeve is going to have to come off for it to fit on there. So now with that wire hooked up, all I have to do is just keep the ignition on inside the car. And then from out here, I can just, just crank it. I don't have to keep jumping inside, in and out, in and out. But we do have uh, my spark tester set up on here. If you guys need to check for spark, you can simply just put a screwdriver inside of here and set it up to where a screwdriver is close to a ground and then and then crank the engine and you're looking for a spark to jump to the ground but um luckily for me i got the good old spark tester 9000 boy yeah, one of the tools my brother gave me been talking about it for years all the shit my brother gave me really comes in handy but uh, check and see if our ignition is on Watch this thing freaking start now. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be mad. Well, I would be mad because I'd want to know why. Okay, so ignition's on. We got this thing plugged into our spark plug. Now let's check and see if we're getting spark. Yes, sir. That thing is getting spark. So now we know we're getting spark. Uh, I believe it's fuel. Uh, I've been believing it's fuel. I already said that, but I just want to eliminate the damn spark issue just in case that is a problem. So now we have all the injectors actually unplugged. Um, with each one of these injector clips, you actually have a power in which should have constant power. So you take your test light and hook it up to a ground or the negative of the battery. And then go ahead and test them, Braven. So as you can see, we have power there. And there's no power on that side because that side's a signal actually so go through and just check and make sure each one has power power and the last one power all right so now the other one is actually a pulsating ground so what you want to do with your check light is actually put this side on the positive not on the ground uh, because we are going to be checking for a ground on the actual signal side so <laughs> the fuck? What's going on? <laughs> right whenever you put that thing into the injector it started cranking bro i was like damn this car's got more problems than we thought but all right so now with that on the signal side whenever we actually crank the starter we should see this light pulsating nothing so that tells me we're not getting a signal to the injectors now i don't know why my lens has spots on it anyhow yeah we've lost our signal to the injector and i don't i don't know why well we swapped out the main relay dude it, it doesn't make any sense to me why because i just went through the wiring i i went through everything that braven did 
and everything is 100% correct to my knowledge and then I also um, looked up some write-ups on forums and stuff just to make sure that like I'm not overlooking anything and it is exactly the way that it's supposed to be bro if I got my main relay out you know what's funny this kind of takes me back this used to be my security system for that car whenever I used to drive that hatch like on a daily basis it used to be my daily driver bro um, so I used to always take the main relay out to avoid from people being able to steal it. So I went to the junkyard one day and I had my main relay inside my tool bag and then the junkyard marked it. That's what that mark is on there. It's from the junk, you know how like they'll mark whatever you already have in your bag just to say you already had it. So yeah, I was kind of like, bro, I don't want you to mark shit all over my damn main relay, but <laughs> I don't know. That was literally, that was probably 10 years ago, man. No, not quite 10. Probably about eight years ago or so that that happened. But anyhow, I'm gonna try my main relay because I know this one works. All right, so just physically looking at the wiring, everything looks all right. So what we're gonna do is actually go through and check continuity on everything and make sure there's no breaks in the system. So hopefully, um, honestly, hopefully we can find the problem so we can fix it and we'll be done with this. But I have a feeling that we're not gonna find any problems. All right, so injector number one. So what Braven's doing, we have the multimeter here uh, set to the lowest one right there which is for continuity right here and it's also got the little like symbol that means it's got the siren so if he touches one side to the injector clip and then i touch this to the corresponding wire that's going into the ecu um this thing should beep and if it beeps that means that we have continuity that means that basically we're doing this show me that basically we're doing this but with a wire in between it, which means there's no brakes. So here we go. You on uh, number one? Yeah, the brown one? Yep. Injector one is good. Now go to number two. Red one? Injector two is good. Three. Injector three is good. All right, now four. Check the number four, it's good. So now, go to the black and, or the, the yellow wire on one of them. On which one? Any one of them. Okay. All right, next one. All right, next one. Next one. Yep. So, no problems there. Wiring's all good. Which is kind of bittersweet. Like, it's sweet because Braven did a good job. There's nothing wrong. Um, but bitter because still, still didn't find our damn problem. No, we're gonna do it again, but instead of testing it the way that I just did, I'm gonna test it on the other side of this jumper, all the way down here at the clip, to make sure that it's actually making it through the jumper. You know what I'm saying? And that's not our damn problem. Actually, I could just check it right there at the ECU. Uh, injector one. Brown. Okay. Yep. All right, next. Okay. Next. Next. All right. Um. So the fourth wire is this white wire. This white wire comes into the ECU. down there okay you still on it yeah yeah that's good yeah it's it's all making it into the ECU as well so 
Oh my god, bro. This is making my motherfucking head hurt, dude. Like, how does the injectors not have signal? Like, we've checked continuity. All the wiring is right. It's getting all the way through the ECU. I just, we just checked all these yellow wires in which are the power. Um, and they're all, it's all good because each injector has power. We already checked that. It's just, it's not getting the signal. It's not, like, what the fuck, bro? I don't, I don't get it. The main rate main relay is good like I was thinking that the fuel pump was weak or it was bad or something but there is fuel flowing like if it I, the, what the PSI of the fuel is I have no idea but there's no avoiding the fact that there's no there, there's no pulse to the injector so even if the fuel was working it wouldn't be starting so like I do I don't fucking know <sighs> there, there's something we're missing here like what tells the ECU to send the signal to the injector like is there something in the distributor that tells the ECU to send signal to the injector because from what I understand the distributor is a completely different com completely different circuit but there has to be something in the distributor that tells the ECU yeah it's fine send fuel you know like <sighs> Problem solving, bro. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Though it is, it is rather relieving whenever you figure it out. But the process is fucking annoying. Oh, by the way, we also killed the battery. <laughs> the battery's dead, so we gotta charge it. Anyhow, guys, I'm gonna relieve some of my frustration by moving on, and we're gonna start on these damn knuckles. We gotta get these thrown in. I have the ball joints currently inside of the freezer. Um, if you guys didn't know, whenever you freeze metal, it shrinks. Whenever you heat it, it expands. So whenever you put the ball joints in the freezer, they'll kind of shrink. And then we'll hit this with a torch and kind of warm it up. So this will expand. The ball joint is shrunk. So it should slide in a little bit easier than what it normally would. I legit have goosebumps right now. Like, that's goosebumps. Look at the goosebumps on my arm. You see that? Like, because, because of how frustrated I am... But at the same time, it's just, it's unbelievable, like, that this could be happening right now. <laughs> Look, I can't, I can't make this shit up, bro. Like, I'm to the point right now that I'm looking at my son and I'm just like, dude, I'm not even a Honda guy, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know shit. There ain't shit in the world that I fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Dude. So we're, we're swapping out the damn steering knuckles for the new knuckles that he just brought. Got the uh, the new ball joints pressed in. They're ready to go, right? I, I gotta put this one back on just so you guys can actually see what's going on here. All right, so here is the passenger side knuckle, the new one installed. Now we just have it like sitting up here roughly, you know what I'm saying? But basically this is exactly the position it's gonna be sitting in. The, ax the axle stub is just kind of sitting, either way, Dude, look at the angle this thing is at. Like, if you come up here to the front, look at how much that thing is angled downwards. Like, I don't care how much lower this car has to go, there is no correcting that, bro. You're not gonna correct that. But if you guys remember, it's the driver's side on this that's bent, it's from the wrecked car, and it's, it's, ugh. So now the, now our passenger side, if we put this knuckle on here, is going to be just as bent as the driver's side. And I'm like, dude, what am I fucking doing wrong? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, I know that you need to get DX knuckles to run the B-series axles. Like, I know these things, man. I've done this before. This ain't my first time. Like, <sighs> anyhow, I'm also working on the driver's side over here, getting this all removed. About ready to put the new one on. Um, here's the new driver's side one. Dude, so... Braven and I are like, what the fuck? Why is it sitting like that? I took a tape measure and I measured the lower control arm. And I went from where the ball joint goes in up to where it attaches to the subframe. 15 inches. And then I go back there to the sedan and I measure the ones on the sedan. 15 inches, bro. I go as far as to measure the ones that are on my fucking car. On khaki. 15 fucking inches, bro. So... Then I'm like, well, Braven says, well, what if it's the upper control arm? What if it's this? Because it looks like maybe this is too far out. 
because then if this was shorter then the top would be in in which it would correct how crooked this is so I measure I measure like a ballpark from here to the ball joint and it's 10 inches right I did the same thing on all the rest of the cars that I have all the yee-ups around here it's all right about 10 inches not not enough to like there, there's some small differences. Like my car is a camera kit; it's got to be adjusted, or whatever, for the height. But um, this is not going to be corrected by a quarter of an inch. I'm sorry; it'd have to be like a good two inch difference. So, so now I'm looking at it. I'm like, what if the steering knuckle's wrong, bro? What if, what if I'm missing something here? Maybe I'm just not as experienced with this shit as I think I am, right? So we have one knuckle on the car. Here is the knuckle that he just took off of the car. All right. So you put this knuckle up here, and here is the other knuckle, one of the new ones that we haven't installed yet. So you put these things side by side, and they look fucking identical. I mean, other than the fact that one's a right and one's a left, you know what I'm saying? But the pitch, the angle, everything looks the fucking same, right? So now you go ahead and pull this one back off. This is the new knuckle. This is the one that he just bought. One that's not associated with this car or the wrecked car out back. Okay, so these knuckles haven't been here. They have not been in the mix. These are completely new knuckles that he went and bought from somebody else and he brought to me so he could use these to correct the problem that we're having with this car because this one is bent. It came off the sedan. It was in a rollover. So taking this knuckle that we had on that wasn't lining up, that is completely new to us, and you put the knuckle that Braven pulled off the car, you put them next to one another. Okay, so, I mean, this isn't dead on, but you see where the hub is at. The hubs are basically in line with one another. They're parallel. Look up here, bro. Dude. So bad. Dude, that is completely noticeable. That's completely noticeable. And look, this says RH3-H. This says RH3-H. Like, dude, these are the same. They're the same, okay? But one of these motherfuckers is bent. That thing is bent to living shit. So now, we have a bent passenger side, which came with these two brand new knuckle, well, not brand new, but these are the ones that the guy just dropped off. The passenger side is bent. And the ones that we already had the driver's side is bent. So now we have a set of bent ones and a set of not bent ones. And the only reason why we were changing that one out was just because he got new ball joints and I was putting the new ball joints on them and everything and just to keep it all like the same, you know what I mean? We're just gonna swap both knuckles, fuck it, send it, right? But now we're, we have to go ahead and put this damn knuckle back on the passenger side, the one that we just pulled off. Um, because it was straight it wasn't bent we like I said We're just replacing both of them for the fuck of it because this one looks like it has brand new studs And I put brand new ball joints on both of them. So we're just gonna swap them both out But now we're gonna go ahead and put this one back on and then I gotta swap out the one that's actually already That's already bent that we've been dealing with with the new one luckily that one's not bent dude So if you put these two these are the two new ones side by side do you see how much further out this one comes? Dude, that, like how does this happen, bro? How are these knuckles all bent like this? I mean, I understand the one that was in the car accident, but how in the hell did he go and pick up two knuckles from somebody off of like, like Marketplace, he went and bought them from somebody, and it just so happened to be that one of those knuckles are also bent. Like how the fuck does that happen, bro? This car is cursed, man. I'm sorry to tell you, Josh. I'm putting it out there. This car is cursed. Either that or it just really does not like me. Or Braven for that matter. <laughs> Welcome to our madness. We, we just want to get this car done more than anything in the world. Just get it done so Josh can take it home and then we don't have to worry about it anymore and we can move on to Braven's car. So that's the reason why, if you guys have noticed, these videos have been repetitive, man. Us just trying to solve all the damn issues that keep coming up with this and fucking car. Cutting it too. There's stuff we haven't even put in there. Yeah. Dude, we've been we've been going at this thing for hours. Day in and day out, man. Like 
it's just ridiculous, man. The, some of the stupid little ass fucking problems that keep coming up with this car for literally everything. Like literally everything is fighting us on this car. And it is just a simple B-series swap into a fucking EF, man. Like, one of the most simplest swaps in the fucking world. And, ugh. All right, so we have finally found the right mix matching freaking set to have a straight set of damn steering knuckles on this car. So, as you can see, that's much better now. Much, much better. It's nice and squared up. We just have cotter pins left to do, but... And... This side is nice and straight now, dude. So definitely a relief for something to finally go right in this damn car. By the way, always keep yourself a set of cotter pins, man. If you guys didn't know, that actually just happened to Junior. He was driving down the street, and Junior's Mr. I don't use cotter pins, and his ball joint fell apart, and his wheel on the hatch kicked out and tore his fender up and everything. So stuck on the side of the road it tore up his axle and everything and i was i was just giving him shit about the cotter pin thing and he says that i jinxed him i most certainly did you're welcome bitch dude i don't get it bro i don't get it so you know what we did for it to start right now we literally took the chip out of the ecu so it runs with no chip in the ECU. But you put the chip in and it won't start. It's not getting any signal to the injectors. Like, what? What? All right, so you see there's no chip in the ECU. Chip is out. Go ahead and shut it off. And start it again. Starts right up. All right, shut it off. Now, stop the beeping. I'm gonna put the chip in. Okay, now try to start it. Doesn't start. All right. Pulling the chip back out. Starts right up. What the fuck? And it's the same with this ECU too. They're both P75s, they're both chipped. Same fucking thing with both of them. If we plug this one in, it won't start with a chip. You take the chip out and it starts. Dude, I'm, I'm so fucking confused, bro. I don't even understand. Hit the gas pedal. Welcome to day three, you guys. Now check it out. We're putting a damn dash in this thing. Uh, it came with an 88-89 cluster on it. I wasn't sure if we're going to be able to use it or not. But watch this, dude. Watch this. You turn the headlights on, and the fucking oil light comes on. You hit the brights, and the fucking check engine light comes on. So, uh, yeah. I think it's fair to say that this cluster ain't gonna work. Did I already tell you guys we're having a problem with everything on this car? Every little thing? Yeah. All right, so update, we switched out the spark plug wires because Josh did pick up the correct wires for his car. Got the dash uh, pretty much completed. There are some, like this could be better. It, you know the little brackets inside of there? that actually bolt the cluster onto the uh, dash itself. Uh, there's only one on this side, and then the, <laughs> like it takes two screws, but one of them's broken off, but either way, like this thing is just kind of floppy in there, but we did make it work. This is a 9091 gauge cluster, and 9091 gauge cluster like hood housing, whatever you'd want to call it. Um, but the the dash itself was actually out of an 8889. That's the reason why that other gauge cluster looked kind of weird um, Yeah, I, I never even noticed before that those were different uh, I just know it looked way different than the one in my car, but now have you started it? So now everything works including that damn check engine light Yeah Also have fucking blinkers now. I think that's because uh, well 
I tried it without the, the hazard button and they wouldn't work. So now the hazard button's actually plugged in. They'll come on. But the hazard button sticks, so you have to like, well, guess I shouldn't have done that. There we go. <laughs> Look, the car still has a lot of problems and there's still a lot of buttoning up we gotta do. What the fuck? Now only one headlight works. Dude, are you fucking kidding me right now? Dude, that explains this car, bro. Oh my god, man. I don't know, but I'm gonna get my first drive in while I can. We might have to tow it back. No, I'm only going right down the street. Oh my god. That thing went over a bump and it just starts bouncing. The right side of the car is higher than the left. <laughs> it's a beautiful car though, that's for sure. to everything and not get it back. No, it'd probably create 10 more problems. <laughs> but most certainly ain't nowhere near done, bro. There's so many little things that need to be like addressed. So anyhow, throw it in the comments down below if you guys have any idea why I can't check the codes on this thing now. You know how you jump, how we were checking the codes before is you jump that thing over there and then it blinks your codes. It don't do that no more. You jump that, the check engine light just stays on. It don't do shit. And it started doing that as soon as it stopped like starting. Um, it also wouldn't let Curly do any data logging when he put his EC, his, uh, I keep calling his laptop an ECU when he put his laptop on there. So, I don't know, dude. The thing's finicky as all hell, but I'm just happy to see that it's actually moving underneath its own power now, and it's running, and I don't want to say too much because I'll probably jinx it, bro. We also have the temperature reading working now, which it's not overheating, though it will if we leave it running for too terribly long because... The fan doesn't come on on its own. Yes, I know, another sensor, the one on the thermostat housing. We'll get to it, but anyhow guys, I know this video is probably 
probably a good 30 minutes, if not longer, man. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably end up cutting a whole lot of bullshit out of this damn thing. So um, we didn't actually get to opening up all the mail. But what I'm going to do is just do that on a separate video, man. Just a really quick separate video. Braven and I will go through, open up all the packages that you guys have sent us. Um, yeah, man, to see what's in there. I'm actually excited to do that. But I need to get in there and get this edited and get it posted up for you guys because I didn't have a video up yesterday. And now you see why. This has been an absolute fucking nightmare, man. And I'm just, I'm happy to see that the end is near. I can see the end. The light at the end of the tunnel, bro. No, I see the beginning. <laughs> the beginning of working on Braven's car, huh? My car, bro. She. So Which, by the way, I just took this guy to a job interview and he starts on Monday. His very first job. He's gonna be a dishwasher. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash the like button. If you didn't like it, fuck you. Later there, rughead. See you later, buddy.